my name is Seth the Black Hat Noir. And I got a problem. I don't think you know about the conservation of momentum. So that means we're going to go on a shooting. And I don't do any shooting without my partner, you seen the kid ain't loud. And I also don't go on any shootings without my big black cowboy hat. Let's go get it. Okay. I don't actually have a black cowboy hat. I do have a black Santa hat, though. So we're going to pretend that it's a black cowboy hat. Right. Okay. So, let's look at what we have here. We have a projectile at the end of this gun. It's going to go into, it's going to be fired into this pendulum, producing an inelastic collision. Kaboom! Let's go see what these are cool. So, this projectile, this metal ball, we'll call lowercase m for its mass, and it's going some sort of initial velocity vi. And it's going into a pendulum, which we'll call that mass capital M. So, since the pendulum is stationary, all the initial momentum will simply be m vi. Okay, great, great. And then afterwards, afterwards, after the inelastic collision, it goes with some velocity Vf. So the final momentum will be the sum of the two masses times Vf. All right, so we'll find all of these values. We'll get a number here and a number here. And those numbers should be very close because momentum is conserved. So let's grab the masses first, since those are easy. Let's grab the masses first. So to find lowercase m, we need the mass of the ball. So with my thumb, I'll pop the ball out of the pendulum. And then I'll find that mass with our friend, the triple beam balance. Excellent. And then the mass of the pendulum, capital M, is written on the corner of the pendulum itself. Uh, in this case, it's 272.42 grams. Okay, great, great. So those are the two masses. So now, what we need to find are clever ways to get VI and VF. Okay, so let's find VF first. To find VF, we want to look at the conservation of energy. So, so, in the conservation of energy picture, the before of that part is the after of the conservation of momentum part. So, we'll pick up right where we left off, and this is traveling at Vf. And then the after of the conservation of energy is when the pendulum has swung up to some height h. The kinetic energy transferred into potential energy. So let's confirm this mathematically. All right, so we have the conservation of energy. All the energy is added up. Must equal zero. No energy is created or destroyed. Good. So the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy plus, plus this pesky delta E other like air resistance and so on. But we can safely ignore this. We can ignore this and we'll still get very accurate results at the end. Okay, all that equals zero. And so now for each piece, the kinetic energy afterwards, well, the pendulum is stationary, so that's zero. Uh, kinetic energy before, we must keep that. Uh, the potential energy afterwards, that's going to be at its height h, we need that. Yeah, but the potential energy before, well, we'll, let's, we'll conveniently call this initial height zero, so that's zero. Okay, great, so we get this, which gives us this. As I told you, the kinetic energy from before 
equals the potential energy afterwards. So one half mv squared, one half the sum of the two masses, the final velocity squared, equals mgh, the two masses added together, g times h. Algebra, vf squared equals 2gh, and then we have what we want. Look, vf equals the square root of 2gh. We know g, we know h, but we know 2, we know g. We now need to just find h, and we can find vf to find the final momentum. Okay, okay. So before we start our firing, actually read the, the uh, safety instructions that are with these set up. All right, so now to recock the gun, I use two hands, one hand on one end and the other hand on the trigger. I hold the trigger when I push in, but when I push in, I want to push in by squeezing both hands together. Because if I only squeeze in one direction, I could move it and it would screw up its alignment. So, hold the trigger, push in, release the trigger, it is now cocked. And so, I want to make sure that the ball is totally in and that this black washer here is all the way to the end too. Okay, to reset the pendulum, uh, we want to be careful never to move the pendulum side to side. So there's a nice lever right at the bottom here, right at the bottom here. I lift that lever up and then I ease it back down. Okay, and then I want to wait until there's no oscillations. And I'm ready to fire, so I go behind it, make sure my arm is level with the table, and then kaboom, there it goes, and elastic Okay, so remember, what we're interested in is that change in height, that change in height. So let's look at it again when it was down here. If we could find the height when it's down here and the height when it's up there, we could take the difference to find our h, our height. So to find the height when it's down here, we need to make use of this little sharp point. That's our reference point. And I'm going to measure from the bottom to that reference point. Ah, uh, okay, so that's one value for that initial height. And then I do it again. That's two values. I do it five times. Take that same measurement five times. That average is the one you want for your initial height. Okay, so now when we fire it and it's up in this position here, we use the same reference point, that sharp point. And I find a measurement here for one value. And to find the next values, I refire each time. So I bring it back. Oops. So I. I do it again. And now I'm ready to find a second measurement for that final height. Do this 10 times. Take the average of those values, that's your value for the final height. Take the difference between the final height and the initial height h we need, the h we need to find the final velocity. Good! Great! 